You know, this is a horror movie, but also a mystery. Not in film noir territory, but still quite interesting. Now, De Gorgon is a 64 British horror film directed by Terence Fisher for Hammer. It stars the great Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, Richard Pascal, and Barbara Shelley. Now, a screenplay by John Gilling and Anthony Nelson Keyes. Cinematography by Michael Reed, edited by James Needs and Eric Boyd Perkins. Music by the great James Bernard. Distributed by British Line Columbia Distributors. Came out in October 1964 at a budget of only 150000 a little bit higher than Hammer at the time. Now this one, it's Germany 1910. The village of Van Dorf has suffered seven horrific murders in five years. In each case, the unfortunate victim has been turned to stone. In the old mill house in the edge of the forest, Sasha Cass tells her artist boyfriend Brutal Heights she is carrying his child. Wanting to stand up to his obligations, Rumor races off in the night to see Sasha's father despite her pleas for him not to go. She races after him, but soon loses him in the dark forest. There, amongst the dark shadows, mm -hmm, something catches her attention. She looks in the face of something hideous and screams. Raising her head once more, she looks upon the horror and screams again before dying. Upon examination of the body, Dr. Namaroff, a local brain specialist at the Van Dorf Medical Institution, discovers the body has turned to stone. Suspicion immediately falls upon Bruno, who is missing, but he's found hanged in the forest by a police search party. An incompetent inquest decides a case of murder and suicide, and Dr. Namaroff doesn't reveal the condition of Cass's corpse. Now, the villagers, feeling robbed of any vengeance, attack Bruno's father, Professor Heights. The local police warn the professor to leave the village, but he refuses to go until his son's name is cleared. He seeks help from Dr. Namaroff. Heights knows that a conspiracy of silence has been set up, and that the villagers do not believe the true case of the uh, murder. Professor Heights believes the murder is a result of something inhuman and hideous from ancient mythology. Its spirit haunts the castle Borsky. Its name is Majiria, a gorgon, a creature whose horrible face can turn human skin to stone. On hearing uh, Hertz's belief, Namaroff immediately terminates their discussion. Now, when Professor Heights connects, contacts his good friend, Professor Meister of Leakseed University, he's also his son, Paul's tutor. Paul immediately leaves to see his father. That night, Professor Heights is drawn to Borsky Castle by a strange calling sound. There, amongst the shadows, he looks upon something horrible, the face of Miguelera de Gorgon. He managed to stagger back to the mill house, and there, whilst slowly turning the stone, outlines a letter to his son, Paul, telling him of the horror that haunts Van Dorf. His final words, I am turning to stone. Paul arrives and learning the sad news of his father's passing, goes to see Namarov. He is rudely dismissed when he asks if there's any link with the supernatural his father wrote of in his dying letter. Paul does, however, gain sympathy from Professor Namarov's beautiful sister, Carla, who visits him at the old mill house and secretly reads a letter the professor had written. Later, she recites what she can remember the letter to Namarov at the institution. They are interrupted by Ratov, the warden who reports that Martha, a violent in inmate, has escaped. Namaroff reveals to Carlo that the spirit of Megarera, the Gorgon, does exist and occasionally takes over the body of an unfortunate human being. Now, that night, Paul is drawn outside the mill house by a strange sound and glimpses the horror of Gorgon's reflection in the garden bull. He wake wakes five years later in a medical institution, aged by 10 years. Determined to destroy the creature, Paul returns to the mill house. Namarov has Carla followed by Ratov. That night, there is a full moon. Under it, Paul visits the graveyard, exhumes his father's body, and discovers it is solid stone. Carla silently watches him from her shadows. Emerging from her hiding place, she confides to Paul that Namarov is in love with her, and she's terrified, terrified of him. Paul tells Carla that he will take her away with him when the horror is ended, but Carla fears it will be too late by then. Now, Paul's tutor, Professor Meister, arrives at the Bill House to see him. Meanwhile, at the medical institution, Namaroff removes the brain from Martha, the dangerous inmate who died soon after recaptured by Radoff. Carla believes Martha to be the main suspect in the murders, but now she senses a far worse suspicion. Meister and Paul visit Inspector Kanoff. They force him to tell them that Carla arrived at Van Dorf as an amnesiac prior to the first murder. Now, meeting a secret at Council Borsky early next morning, Carla tells Paul that she will go away with him to safety, but it must be now. He refuses and she runs off. Paul runs after her and is attacked by a waiting Radoff, but Meister scares him off. Meister tells Paul he believes that Carla becomes an amnesiac during the full moon. It is during uh, this, that period that the spirit uh, arises. 
And that spirit is the Gorga. Now, uh, Paul agrees with Carla that to leave now is the best thing, but you must leave immediately and he will follow later when the mystery is solved. Later that day, Paul cables Leipzig, uh, where Carla is supposed to arrive by train, but there's no sign of her. The night he goes to the castle uh, Borski as the full moon is rising, uh, they, uh, there amidst the castle ruins, Namarov is waiting with a sword for the arrival of Carla. He attacks Paul and they fight. As the fight continues, the Gorgon appears at the top of the castle's staircase. Very effective scene, by the way. Namarov seizes the chance and races forward to behind the, behind the creature, but he looks upon his face as it turned to stone. Paul is trapped as the creature advances on him and sees her reflection in a mirror. Suddenly, Professor Meister approaches from behind, clutching the Namarov's sword. With a switch slash to the braid, he bends the creature, but it's too late to save Paul, who is now dying. Dying. Slowly turning to stone, Paul looks upon the severed head of the Gorgon as his feature changed to that of his beloved Carla. And again, a good climax. Very, very, uh, what do you call, House of Secrets DC comic horror style. Now, the Gorgon was a base of the story submitted to Hammer by their Canadian fan, J. Llewellyn Devine. Director John Gilling and producer Anthony Nelson and Keys expanded on Devine's outline, developed it into a screenplay. For a role in Monster, former ballerina Prudence Hyman was recruited because the monster was supposed to float gracefully like a wraith. Filming occurred, of course, at Ray Studios in Berkshire. Now, the Gorgon was driven to the UK by Columbia Pictures, where it was supported by The Curse of the Mummies 2. It was released in the States by Columbia on February 1765, again, supported by The Curse of the Mummies 2. Now, the Gorgon was released in a Blu-ray by Mill Creek Entertainment in March 2018 as a double feature with the Hammer movie, The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll. The title of the film, unfortunately, is misspelled as the Gorgon on the spine. Now, Variety wrote, though written and directed at a leisurely tone, it's, a, it's an effective movie. Uh, well made and a direct yarn that mainly gets the trills to atmosphere. The period storyline is simple and predictable, but John Gilling has turned out a well-rounded piece in Terrence Fisher's direction is restrained enough to avoid any unintentional y- uh, yaks. The monthly Phil Belton found that the monster's appearance was belated, vague, and insufficiently spectacular. Still, it makes a change from vampires, and though the film has little genuine flair for atmosphere, it is quite well acted by Richard Basco and approximately blank-eyed statuesque Barbara Shelley. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film holds an approval rating of 67% based on nine reviews with a weighted average rating of 6 out of 10. What a lot of people have trouble with because Lee and Cushing were kind of underused in this movie for a lot of people and are on the same side. Because usually, you know, one is Van Helsing and one is the big guy. Now, The Gorgon was adapted into a 17-page comic story by Scott Goodall with art by Trevor Goring and Albert Cuyas, which was told in two parts in the magazine The House of Hammer, issues 11 of 10, 12, 11, 12, published in 77 by General Books Distribution, which is an imprint of Thorpe and Porter. Now, you can probably see it on many, uh, what do you call, streaming services, but I initially saw this in the edited version, so I can't give it a full review. Uh, it seemed to be a three out of four, but the stone effects for 1964 were very effective because the curse of, you know, uh, the the ancient Greek curse with turning people to stone to uh, what do you call it, true spell or otherwise, very effective. But to see Cushing and Lee uh, push out this movie, being underused, it seems to me they were trying for a sequel, but it never played out. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the latest Hammer uh, uh, review. If you like what we're doing here, give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share. And don't forget, you could spend a number of weeks watching Hammer movies back-to-back and not get the way all through them. For this, I would uh, suggest looking at the various multiple-hour documentaries of the, the Hammer movies, especially the 60s and 70s, to get uh, a more behind-the-scenes look. Very effective, as we like to say. Thanks for listening. Bye.